All right, guys, we're here just like that. Um, we made it down. So I've already done a video on the John Deere header, which is over here, okay? If you haven't seen that one, go check it out. So this is the last header we're gonna do. And uh, so just a little bit of history. I'm sitting in the truck here because it's a lot warmer right now. We'll get out here in a minute, but it's freaking cold as you know. So um, prior to going to Airflex headers, we had always ran the John Deere um, Hydroflex headers, okay? And prior to the belt Hydroflex, we ran the auger table, like the old auger table right there that you see. So we've always been John Deere combines with John Deere headers for years and years and years. Except if you want to go all the way back to like the Massey 760 days and the Massey 860 days. So I have not run a Macdon and uh, I have not run the first generation of honeybees. We switched over in 2019. As you guys know, we were all, all green, green combines, green headers, and we wanted to jump in the neighbor's pool naked. So we already did that, as you already know, and we switched over to the Ideal Line Combines, and we went to the 50-foot Air Flexes. Why was the big draw to the Air Flex? Um, well, switching to the Ideal Combines, Echo really didn't, in my opinion, have a super good header. So uh, we needed to look at other options, and then, so basically it came down to either Macdon or the Air Flex. Now, I'm not a big, like I like hinge headers, like you know, the hinge header like a Macdon, it works well in hills and so on and so forth, but I'm a true flex type guy. I like to be able to go over badger holes, go over underground rocks and just the one portion of my header mold up and uh, without disturbing the rest of my header. And our honeybee manufacturer is not too far away from us. So it makes it very convenient for us to uh, go and grab parts um, we know the owners really well, heck we're neighbors with the owners, and they were the first ones at the time to offer 50 feet. So yes, don't get me wrong, everybody right now is offering 50 foot headers, like John Deere just came out with their 50 foot, Macdon came out with their 50 foot, um, but Honeybee Heads had 50 foot headers out for years and years and years, they already got 60 foot headers out. So everyone else is kind of late to the game to be quite honest with you, so we wanted to go with the 50 foots, and that's exactly what we did. All right, we're stepping outside. You see all these tracks? That's actually deer. We got lots of deer around. Muleys, whitetail, antelope. We got the whole nine yards. So anyways, I'm not gonna waste your guys' time. You guys are busy. I'm busy. It's cold out. So we're gonna run through this header maybe too quick. I'm gonna try and cover as many points as possible. Hindsight now, looking back on it, probably should have tried to do the review right after harvest because you know everything would be fresh in our minds sorry it's so stinking bright everything would be fresh in our minds um i wouldn't have to be trying to think back i'm like you know what was it this or what was it that or so on and so forth and it wouldn't be cold but didn't have time at the time so anyway let's just do a quick general walk around first okay so we got the 50 foot air flex and then um it comes with the pea auger or canola auger, which is pretty much what we use. It goes all the way to the end. It's a lot smaller than the deer one, so that's kind of nice. It comes with its own transport. Right now we have the ideal hookups. Gauge wheels, we'll talk about that. Then comes the front transport, we'll talk about that. It's got split rail talk about that on um, the canvases are all one we'll talk about that like all one as in like one solid canvas remember the deer they split them in half knife drives are up here on the front unlike the end drives on the John Deere oh we got some serious snow we're walking through here transition plate we'll talk about that a great big one and then uh, on these ones we do have the simple monitor We'll talk about that. So these are 2019s. So let's get to first off, cons. I'll we start with the cons first. Con number one to Mike is this here sensor bar, okay? Now this runs all your, like this is a very important sensor bar and there ain't much to it. See that? Ain't much to it. We've already talked about the John Deere header being as tough as nails, fence posts, signs stop signs power poles doesn't really matter you can mow them over this thing works great but i like to call it the princess header it looks good 
it works good. It's just very delicate, okay? You gotta be careful with this here. You can't just throw a hired guy on this thing and say, hey, hop to it, there you go. Um, first power, puff powerful. First fence post she's gonna try and clear because you know, you gotta try and get these things through gates. We gotta get through gates. We gotta try and go over signs on the road allowances, right? Because we're moving, because we have to move. Well, most of our land's blocked up, but not all of it. We gotta move down the road. It can't be unhooking every time. That's just not practical. Heck, even in crop, so let's talk about this sensor bar for a second. There needs to be, there needs to be something, maybe it be some one by, or whatever it is, two by two, whatever it might be, it run all the way down here from that brace to this brace. This bar needs to be protected because we have ripped these sensor bars off, I don't know, many times, okay? So for one example, we were driving down a dirt trail like this is a dirt trail, okay? And the trail has been sunk by like two feet, so which means the field is actually higher on both sides, all right? And uh, so we're moving all the combines down and we're standing derm crop or wheat crop on each side and we can't lift our headers high enough because we've got to remember this is the lowest part of this header when it's on your combine up in the air going down the road. This is the first thing that's gonna go, okay? So this actually got brushed off by standing wheat, okay? So the standing heads are up here and they're all kind of putting their heads around it. We can't lift any higher, rip them all off, okay? That's a big stinking pain in the butt. It's not fun to put them back on. Fortunately, we're not too far away from the manufacturer, but in my opinion, this sensor bar has to be protected at least from here to here. Not trying to clear fence posts and power poles and stuff like that up here, but at least needs to be protected from here, okay? Con number two, the transport. Okay, it does come with its own transport, but it's not integrated, okay? Which means, unlike a MacDon or something, or the deers, they just rotate the tires and it's all part of your header. You have to disconnect this and the front, and you're gonna leave it wherever you happen to unhook your combine, okay? Or hook up your combine. So maybe you unhook one at one field here. I'm starting to get cold. Whew. And uh, you know, you do a couple sections here and you do a thousand acres over there and you do another couple thousand. Before you know it, you might be 30 miles away from where, you, cause you've just been working yourself all the way around. You might be 30 miles away from all your transports. Now you gotta go send like seven or eight trucks to go pick up all your transports. So that's kind of a pain in the butt. I'd like to see somehow that I can keep my transport with my header so that way when I need to switch over, no big deal, I just quickly switch it over and we're off to the races. Okay. Next con, con number three, is your gauge wheels. These wheels are far too small. They need to be a full size, and I think that is an option now. And in my opinion, they need to be farther out. They need to be out closer out to here. You got too much header hanging off the back from these wheels, okay? So if you're in some rolling ground, you're gonna smack that header into the hill before and this is what this is how it monitors this is on your sensors okay before uh your gauge wheel starts to tell your combine that you need to start picking up that feeder house all right but i think the reason why they put them here is because this is one of the main support braces so they probably wanted to be inside that but i'm just saying i think it needs to be like over here i don't maybe right here but I, anyway it needs to be farther out next con is these jacks I'm just going to take this off for a second here. Whew, I'm getting cold. I'm trying to work as fast as I can. When you're jacking these things, you got to jack these things up or down. So when you're all the way up, that means you're in flex mode. So when you want, you need to put these jacks down to get this all the way down. So you're, it's just a jack. You're lowering this wheel for, so that way you're in rigid mode. And then all you do, do is you got to switch it to rigid on your monitor. They have since put an airbag on here. So there is an update. They did away with the jack, but since we are working with the 2019, this is what we're working with. This has to be a con, because this is a knuckle smasher. This, this jack up here adjusts your pee auger, okay? It just happens to be in a bad spot that they're both very close to each other. And as you're jacking, snap, bang, 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 all right? That's not real fun on the knuckles. It gets really old. You get the idea. That's a con. 
there we go. All right, okay, so next con is the transition plate. So this here is a transition plate, okay? This is a very large transition plate. When you are in flex mode, this levels out more. Actually, no, correction, when you're in flex mode, this is the most steep. It's at its steepest point in flex mode. And in rigid mode, because you suck this up, by sucking this thing up, it actually levels it out more, okay? I've said many times, the transition plate on the honeybees, it's a love-hate relationship. It completely depends on what you're cutting and a whole other bunch of factors on that as well. So for example, if you're in lentils, you're gonna love the transition plate. If you're in a good crop of lentils, you're gonna love the transition plate because that great big stone dam basically is keeping all your rocks out, it's keeping all the dirt out. Um, it does a really good job on sifting all that crap out before it gets into your combine because you don't wanna be taking rocks in your combine. That causes a lot of thousands and thousands of dollars worth of damage. But since we're talking cons, it's a con because if you're in thin crops, light crops, it also keep those out. <laughs> and what I mean by that is, since it's gotta go up so far, if you're in a really thin crop, and you gotta remember that this year we cut a two bushel lentil crop, four bushel durum crop, all right, which is terrible. That's just, it's barely even worth us cutting. That's a whole other story, we need the seed. So, and yes, you can lure your reel down to basically brush this. You can brush it pretty much, right? And tell the first badger hole that you might go over, or the first underground rock deadhead you might go over, or first gopher hole you might go over, since it's a true flex, maybe it just flexes this part right here, and then you're gonna shave your fingers off in that section because you went over that badger hole. If you had a Mac done or something, you're gonna be more hinged, you're gonna be more rigid, it's harder to shave any fingers off on something like that because technically you're rigid, you're just hinged, okay? But since you're true flex, you can take fingers off all day long if you're not careful. Obviously, we lowered our reels down, we're trying to take out a two bushel crop. A lot of it's just sitting right here, we can't hardly get it up, okay? Can't hardly get it up. Also, uh, tough crops, wet crops. If you have green straw, green wheat, maybe you're going around a slough, you're cutting around a slough, maybe there's some really thin green stuff, whatever, and it's just gonna stick to this stainless steel transition plate. Maybe you're out there in a drizzle. Maybe there's some rain coming, you're combining, and you're like, I ain't stopping, boys. We ain't stopping until we literally get rained out. <coughs> Excuse me. The minute this catches any kind of rain, when this gets wet, it will stick to everything. Everything's gonna stick to this transition plate you will basically cease to combine when this gets wet, okay? Because you just it's just gonna build up, build up, build up, and then eventually it's gonna uh, stop cutting because you've got so much material on your cutter bar that you're not gonna be able to cut it anymore, okay? So, since we're talking about cons, that is a con. All right, now let's talk about pros. We basically already talked about the pro of this transition plate being a pro for lentils and good crops, and uh, it will sift out a lot of your rocks, a lot of your dirt for your combines. And that's pretty freaking awesome. Versus the John Deere that has a stone down about this big versus, you know, great big one like here. You're, you're collecting everything, man. You go over a badger hole or gopher hole, it's all going in your combine. You go over a badger hole or gopher hole with the honeybee, you're gonna have a big wad of dirt right there on that transition plate and that's as far as it goes if it gets past it maybe it did maybe you went over a really big one maybe you were dumping on the go and you were cutting at the same time and didn't see this one because it's 50 foot headed there's a lot to watch let's let's just say it gets past holy crap guys i'm freaking cold i'm trying not to chatter my teeth but let's just say it gets past we're gonna go in here for a second you have like a pre stone rock dam right here so all your rocks and your dirt are going to get right here before it gets to this belt this belt's going to take it in your combine hold on here boom you want to dump it you just open that thing up brush out pretend this is this is your dirt okay brush it all out grab it it's just an over centering latch bing bang chalada you're off to the races the honeybee headers work really well um, keeping the rocks and the dirt out of your combines, okay? That's a big pro. Whew, that's, hey. Next pro, obviously P auger. Um, it's a decent size, it works awesome. Also using canola, goes right to the end. 
that's a pro. Next pro is it does come with its own transport. Unlike the John Deere, many of the John Deere headers, the newer ones are starting to come with transports, integrated transports, but this still comes with the transport. Yes, it's a pain in the butt when you have to leave it in your field, but at least you don't have to go out and buy a third party Stud King or whatever type of trailer that you might need or whatever is local to you to transport your header, which is an extra cost. So, is on the newer models, you can get a full size tire and they went airbags here. So that way you don't have to get out and adjust your jack and smash your knuckles all the time. So that's a pro. Another pro is that it's light. I guess you could say that's also a con that it's light because it's like the princess header you gotta be careful with, it's easy to break. But it's still a pro that's light. This thing weighs like 9,200 pounds or something like that. And it's a 50 foot. And that John Deere header, which is 45 foot over there, weighs like 9,850 or something, almost 10,000 pounds. So this 50 foot honey, Honeybee Air Flex is lighter than a 45 foot John Deere header. So that's a pro and a con, depending on which way you look at it and how many fence posts you want to move over. Um, let's talk about the monitor because they did do a monitor upgrade. I think they started from 2019 and up, they did a monitor upgrade. So uh, we have a super simple monitor. I wish I had it here to show you guys, I don't. And I'm not, I'm too freaking cold right now to go find it. But anyway, it just suction cups onto the side window. I think you guys have seen that in my combine videos. It just has like three toggle switches. It's pretty simple. You toggle switch one to go flex, toggle switch the other way to go rigid. Then you have uh, your uh, air compressor on off because they have, they have an integrated air compressor on these things because they are an air flex. And they, I'll show you that actually. They do run airbags. See these airbags? There's nothing hydraulic about it. Like the Hydroflex is hydraulic on the John Deere. These are all ran by airbags, okay? But going back to the monitor, it's super simple, it works really good. And then your next set of toggle switches, I think is just because over here. Oh, I don't know why this is open. Because it's missing its pin here. <laughs> it doesn't look good, but anyway, that's our fault because there's a pin, we're missing a pin. Anyways, this cylinder right here, on this, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, adapter plate. We'll just, we'll call it that for the sake of it being cold outside and Mike just wants to speed through this. Um, you have an extra cylinder here, which you don't have on your John Deere. So our feeder house on our combines, they, they go like this, okay? But they also go like this. So that's on our combine. So you can still hook up to the Honeybee header and uh, you can hook onto the John Deere header and you can tip your header down on the John Deere via your feeder house. You can do that on the Airflex as well, but on top of it, which is a pro, you have more range yet because you can release this cylinder and it tips the header down even more or sucks it up depending on what you want to do. So you just got a lot more range. Also another, another pro is like I said, is this adapter plate. Um, so as you know, on the John Deere, except for the new ones that they're coming out with, um, they're rigid. It's just a rigid header. You hook up to it right here. The thing's 45 feet of solid rigidness, yes. The table is a Hydroflex, you know, it's a flex. But as far as hooking onto your combine, if you want to ram that thing into a side hill, <laughs> it's basically, like it's literally pinned onto your combine, like you'll do damage, right? And you'll still do damage to this thing, but with this adapter on here, it already has a certain amount of range that it can do this. So before it actually starts activating the hydraulics on your feeder house, right? So maybe you, Maybe you're not paying attention, you're dumping on the go or something and you start running up a hill on this side like this. It's already moving the range on this thing while it's sending the signal to your combine. So it's just a little easier, I like it. Also another perfect example, um, and this has actually happened, I think I, I told you guys this in the John Deere. Sorry guys, my teeth are literally chattering in the John Deere. It's only like minus 50, no big deal. Um, video, we were driving along combine like five mile an hour or something which is not a fast speed combine with the John Deere 45 foot Hydroflex over there and we were going across the drill sprayer tracks or maybe we were going the way it was seated we typically always combine the way it's seated but for some reason the sprayers went the other direction for whatever reason that's a whole other story anyways they're around the 710 tires the big floaters on the sprayers and they went through mud and left those great big ruts we were combined along and with the duels, you fell perfectly into those ruts. And of course we're only cutting it like, you know, that high off the ground. 
And that thing, it, it was violent. It was just like, BAM! Like the whole 45 foot header just BOOF! It just smashed it right on the ground. Luckily it's John Deere, you can't break him, right? Um, but it was very violent on the header and the combine where when you have the gauge wheels, which is another big pro, and you have that adapter plate, it takes a lot of that shock and absorb out of there before it has to get to your feeder house to start activating it. So it's just another, basically, it's like a backup system. It works awesome. It just, your header moves and molds and shapes and falls to the ground a lot better with the plate and with the gauge wheels versus being stationary to your combine, okay? Oh, whoo! My phone is saying it is too cold. Actually, that's a thing. It's saying it's too cold. We got to speed this up. Um, I'm sure I have forgotten a few things. But I do believe that I got the basics of them. Let's talk about now. Uh, let's talk about um, operation. How do they work compared to like the John Deere? Well, like I said, the John Deere worked better in the thinner crops. It had a very small transition, not hardly even a transition plate, like a little stone dam thing. It's about this big. You know, you have a two bushel crop falling that right to the combine. It goes no big deal. Um, this one has a large one. So this year the John Deere worked better due to it falled. I shouldn't say it falled to the ground. Same conditions, condition to condition, same condition. I would say the honeybee falls the ground better just due to the transition plate and everything. It just falls, it molds to the ground better. 50 feet molded to the ground better than the 45 foot John Deere. But in saying that, you can hug the ground all day, all long, however many hours a day you want to. But if you have a really large transition plate and a really thin crop or green crop, it just doesn't want to go up. So on a normal year, an average year, what is average? I don't even know anymore, but the Airflex will cut and do a better job. But this year, the John Deere did a better job. So that's why we run both. Every year is different. Um, also, I just want to quickly talk about uh, the canvases. The John Deere has split canvases. This thing has this thing has one solid canvas, which means it's just one great big belt and it's joined together. Uh, I, I would think that would be easier to change. It has a joiner. I haven't actually done it yet. But uh, the John Deere, they have split canvases, and you have to pull everything off the front because there is no joiner on those canvases. So in summary, the header works. The header works good. It's a princess header. You gotta be careful with it. They break easy. We need to get protection on the sensor bar. I like that they're coming out with bigger tires and the airbags on the, on the gauge wheels. I think the gauge wheels need to be moved out farther. Nothing you can really do about the transition plate. It's just a love-hate relationship. It works really good when you're in a normal crop. Uh, it's just it doesn't work very good if you're in a thin crop. At least in my opinion it doesn't. Not compared to like the John Deere. Um, let's talk breakdowns, okay? Let's quickly run over some breakdowns. We've had a few breakdowns with the John Deere's and we've had a few breakdowns with the Honeybees. Obviously the sensor bar. Uh, we've had some bearings go. This is, your, uh, this is your knife drive. We've had a few knife drive bearings go. This one right down here, hold on. That bearing's gone a couple times. I think almost in every head of that bearing's gone, which is kind of concerning that they're only 2019s. Um, we've had a few air leaks. You try and keep air like in a tire and stuff. Well, just imagine a bunch of airbags. Luckily, they have the integrated um, air compressor. Uh, what else? Bearings. Those bearings. Oh, yeah. We've had a few. We've had a few of these bearings go. Okay. No U-joints yet, but we had a few bearings. So we've had some bearing issues. And also, I'm standing on this. I feel like walking all the way around. Those are our knife drive, those heads right there. See if I can zoom in on those. Maybe I can't. Here we go. Right there. It's because it's center knife drive. We've uh, broke a few of those. But maybe two, maybe two or three. So not too bad. All in all, they've been pretty decent. Um, pr we've probably had more bearing issues than anything. <laughs> Knife drive bearings and these bearings. And I don't think those bearings should be going yet, to be quite honest with you. That's, that's a bit of a concern to me.
Had a few hiccups. I don't know if it's combine side or header side. Combine people blame the header side. Header side blades the combine people as they always do. Um, you go hit your header return button and it drops your header too fast. And uh, it'll actually push down on these caster wheels and uh, we've broke, we've ruptured uh, the tire by pushing down on it too hard. Or maybe you're just combining down the field and uh, everything's going normal and then you look over and there's a lot of squat on these tires. You're like, there should not be squat on these gauge wheels. And it's pushing down on it too hard. So I don't know. We'll see in the future where that all goes, but we have ruptured a few tires because of that. I already covered the breakdowns on the John Deere. Obviously, this is a brand new header. We did lose the P auger. <laughs> um, you're not gonna break these things like they're, these things are rock hard. But on the previous gens, I don't know about these ones, their weak point was this flat bar. So the flat bar is where your guards bolt to here. It's actually like about this wide. It's a flat bar that runs it down your header. It would break right here in this corner. That was very common to break the flat bar. We've broke many of those, and then you have to replace the. Uh, I think they came in 20 foot chunks or something like that. And then uh, roller bearing sensors on the John Deere's were very prone. It happened quite often. I'm trying to think if you had sensor issues on the Honeybee. No, I don't think so, other than the one that we just ripped off. <sighs> Whew. Okay, guys. Oh, sorry. That's it. Mike's cold. I can't feel my nose, my fingers, my toes. I'm done. You guys have yourself a good one. That kind of summarizes everything. I do like on the John Deere, I can carry my spare knife on it. You can't do that on a honeybee. I would like to be able to carry a spare knife because sometimes you just don't have enough time to go through and just pop all those sections off. It's quicker just to pull the knife out, put a new one on when you're in the field. Um, I think that's it. That's it, I'm done. I'm going back home. So I just came down here to do this video. You guys are awesome. You guys are freaking awesome, and uh, happy new year. Happy new year, guys.